Hi, this video is the third in the series of the sculpting workflow. So I've finished the retopology and now I'm setting up the multi-resolution modifier. The first thing to do is to apply the subsurf at the subdivisions you want. I could have gone more detailed but I just kept it at one. Then apply the shrink wrap modifier. Then before applying the mirror modifier, it's a good idea to tidy up your mesh. I selected the vertices in the middle, made sure they were all joined, and it was tough with the snapping around the eyes, so I smoothed those out and made sure that was nice and neat. At that point I added the multi-resolution modifier. Started with just two subdivisions and you can see that I'm just getting the basic shape and make sure I'm happy with the main features. My original sculpt was too detailed really and I didn't need to put that much effort into it. All I needed to do was get to an early stage because the multi-res is the place where you want to start adding the detail. So once I've added the main features, it's time to add a bit more detail so I can subdivide it again. And you can see because the topology is nice that it's much easier to add detail with the multi-resolution modifier than it is the Dyne Topo. So that's one reason for using the multi-resolution modifier. Because it's got the correct topology, the detail's in all the right places. It's very good as well for adding a texture brush to, which I'll do later. So at the moment it's mirrored in the x-axis and it's nice and simple to get some basic lines, edges and details in that format. When you're smoothing out detail, it's sometimes useful to go down levels of subdivision. So you can actually go up and down the levels, change things at a lower level and then go up again to your detail. I do go to five subdivisions at one point, but actually I think it was too much for my processor and graphics card to handle, especially doing the screen capture at the same time. If you want to learn more about this sculpting technique of using textures, then I'll add a card here for another tutorial. And this is where I turn the mirror off and start adding some character. Because this project is not for commercial use or anything, I'm really experimenting, seeing how deep I can go with these wrinkles and creases. And this is the other great thing about the multi-resolution modifier. I can start adding these textures to the brushes using the anchor paint method. I can then click and drag and just make sure that the flow is going in the right direction. So all the wrinkles are going in the same direction as you'd expect them to go on the skin. So the way I'm doing it, 
I have a textured brush for wrinkles and pores. I click and drag them onto the mesh and then smooth areas out that I think would have less influence. It's at a reasonably low strength, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 I go up to at one point I think. Probably went a bit overboard on the pause, but I wanted to give it some real character to this old man. And with the matte cap shading, it's often a little bit more exaggerated. So when I come to do the texturing, we'll see whether it's that much more highlighted. Also with the multi-resolution modifier it does a great job of baking out to the normals. So all this detail will be baked out and it will become a normal map. And I can use my lower resolution mesh as a base model for unwrapping and texturing. And of course when it's rendered it won't have so many polys to worry about. So you can really see the sort of old gnarly skin that this man's got. And I was really experimenting, putting these wrinkles all over the place, experimenting with different brushes and just enjoying myself.
that was the multi-resolution modifier. Hopefully you can see the advantages of that. In the next session, I'll be unwrapping the mesh, ready for texturing.